love the earth that he sent his son, nor did he so love the things in the earth, but he loved the people of the earth. That's So the world is the creation, the world is also the people, and then the other world that Satan is controlled of is called the cosmos, is the things and the attitudes and the systems that run this particular world. This world is run by a cosmocrator or a world ruler. The word cosmos is world and creator is ruler. He is a cosmocrator. It's kind of a ruler. Cosmocrator, which is a world ruler. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to wrap this up because we can go on and on. It's, it's a really cool principle. Well, let's wrap it up. So in light of this particular gospel or this parable, we realize that the things that, as they are right now, that we do not see justice, righteousness, and peace now. We see trouble now. We see it in our souls. We see it in the church. And we see it in the world we live in. And it's because God has allowed wheat and tares to grow up together. Okay, so people who are looking for justice now, you're not going to find justice. People who are looking for righteousness now, you're not going to find righteousness. We are. This is a troubled time because Satan is here and evil is allowed to grow up with us. But there are those things are planned for the future. And um, I will close with a verse about that in a minute. So as long as we are in these bodies of flesh, we'll be at odds. There will be this struggle as long as we are in this body of flesh. And we can say, Lord, I don't want to struggle against my sin. And he says, don't struggle against your sin. Go to the cross and be forgiven. Don't struggle against it. Just go to the cross and be forgiven. Love the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And we can do that with our divine nature in him. But if I take on and I'm going to say, I am going to be perfect. I'm going to be a perfect person. You will end up a very frustrated and also maybe a self-righteous person. Because God has said, sorry, it's not going to happen. You are intention. That's the way it is. Because we and now are growing up together. And the peace that we have is peace that comes from what we know of the future. That Satan will be bound a thousand years, then Satan will be released. He will then have rebellion against God, he will be cast into the lake of fire, and Satan will no longer be, and every justice will be made. That our old sin nature, when we die, dies with our body, and when we get our glorified bodies, we will no longer struggle against an old sin nature, never, ever one day. That's our great hope. But as we stand today, we know that there is the struggle. As long as we are in these bodies, we will be at odds with our divine nature that is in us. As long as Satan is free to roam about the earth, there's always going to be false teachers, deceivers, and persecutors in the church. It's just the way it's going to be. But there is a solution to that um, in God's word and in the blood of the Lamb and that we are really not from this world. And then our battle is not against people, I mean, just, well, yeah, I think I got just, yeah, Ephesians, if you have a Bible there, I want you to turn to Ephesians uh, chapter 6, and just to see that here we are in this tension, and Paul declares this, he says in verse 11, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil, against the, the, um, the um, schemes or the, the uh, strategies of the devil. And then verse 12, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but we war against rulers, against powers, against world forces of this darkness, against spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. What God is telling us through the Apostle Paul is it's not about people. Our struggle is not against people. It's not about people. Behind the people, there are unseen forces. That is what we are concentrating on. Because guys at your university, I don't even know that Satan exists, or if they do, they might worship him. 
Uh, that's even possible. They sing about him, but they don't do not know the realities that we know about this about this earth. Therefore, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but instead we minister. In Acts 26, 18, he says, Now I send you to open their eyes, to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they might receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance amongst them that are sanctified by faith that is in me. This is what we are called to do, to minister, not to fight against flesh and blood. We're not going to take on the political systems of the world. We don't even care. Yes, be informed. Yes, be active. Yes, be involved. But it is really not our problem to clean up the politics of this world. Instead, we are called to be ministers in this world. No matter what political system that we are in, we are called to be ministers. Whether it is under communism, whether it is under socialism, capitalism, or anything in between. So Peter said in 1 Peter 5 eight, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him and be steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions that you have are accomplished in other brethren that are in the world. The persecution against us is really satanic persecution against the church. And he says, just relax about it. Just keep ministering and relaxing. And we'll close with these verses. In Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16, the very last chapter of that book. Romans 16, sorry, it's Okay, now, I beseech you, brethren. Now, I beseech you, brethren. Verse 17. I urge you, brethren, keep your eyes on those who cause dissensions and hindrances contrary to the teaching which you have learned, and turn away from them. There is Darnell in the church. Just turn away from it. We don't go on a crusade against it. Turn away from it. And there are false teachers. You have to... Get you have to read your Bible. You have to be discerning and know the truth from a, from a lie. So one thing is that we would turn from them and are teaching the falsehood. Verse 18, from such, for such men are slaves not of our Lord Jesus Christ, but of their own appetites. And by smooth and flattering speech, they deceive the hearts of the unsuspecting. For the report of your obedience has reached to all Therefore, I am rejoicing over you, but I want you to be wise in what is good and innocent in what is evil. Wise in what is good, innocent. And it means that I know all about Christ. I know all about the Bible. I know all about what God teaches. I know all about spirit-filled life. And I don't know a lot about all the evil that is in the world. You know, uh, the way that they train bank tellers I don't know if anybody ever here has been a bank teller, but one way that they train bank tellers is to count real money because there's so many counterfeits. It's easy to have a counterfeit bill, a $20 bill. So many options of counterfeits. There's, if all they do is they make you handle real bills so much that when you feel a fake one, you say, that's not a real bill. I don't know what's wrong with it, but it's not real because I've handled so much of the real money. And so this is, what the, this is what Paul is saying. He's saying, I want you to be wise concerning what is good so that when what is evil comes, you just say, I don't know what's wrong with that, but there's something wrong with that. I, can, I have sensed the heart of God. I know what His grace is. I know what His love is. And this is not that. Okay, so be wise concerning good and innocent concerning evil. And then verse 20, and the God of peace will soon cross Satan your feet. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Okay, let's pray. <coughs> Lord, it's, uh, it's so true that the realities of life are not so obvious. But we see it also in science and linguistics that 
heart of things are not as obvious as the outside things. But Lord, you've shown us this morning that there's more than meets the eye when it comes to what's really happening here. And though we put our trust in you, and may we be lights in the world like you have declared that your children are. You are the light of the world. May we be salt in this world, something that preserves, something that stings, something that adds flavor, Lord. May we be joyful to the maximum because of our salvation. And yes, though um, the end of the world wasn't yesterday, and actually there's never going to be a complete end, but we know you're coming back, and, and that's a mystery, and we will understand it when we see it. But for us right now, wherever we go, to our workplaces, to our college campuses, to our homes, Lord, wherever we go, that we can carry you with us. We are children of the kingdom, and you have put us here. May we not be concerned with the evil, but just be concerned with what is good. And let that be our thought, let that be our contemplation, and our the food for our lives. Thank you, Father, for bringing us together today. May you use this week to your glory, as truly it could be the last week. Maybe you return, but also maybe it's our last week. And we just pray that you minister to us with these words and this great parable. We thank you for it. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen.